So let's start. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for joining my talk on attention-based vandalism detection in OpenStreetMap. My name is Nicolas Tempelmeier from the Leibniz University Hannover in Germany. And this is joint work with Elena Demidova from the Data Science and Intelligent Systems Group at the University of Bonn. So this talk is going to cover vandalism in OpenStreetMap. So I'm going to start with a brief introduction to OpenStreetMap so what everyone knows that what I'm talking about. So if you have never heard of OpenStreetMap, you can think of it as the Wikipedia for map data. So it's a web map and uh, it's collab collab collaborative and crowdsourced. So everyone is free to contribute to this map to add uh, new entries to the map. So if you take a walk in the park, for example, and you notice there is a new path maybe, then you can go to OpenStreetMap and add this new path yourself to the map and it will actually show up in the live system. It was funded in 2004 in the UK and by now it's the most prominent source of uh, open source cartographic information uh, used in a lot of applications, for example, in embedded web maps or in routing algorithms. Next, um, let's talk about vandalism. So everyone knows vandalism in the real world, but it might not be obvious what's vandalism in OpenStreetMap, right? So I'm going to provide a few examples of actual vandalism, real cases. Um, so first here in the picture, you can see graffiti. And it turns out we also have graffiti vandalism in OpenStreetMap. Um, so there people use geometric shapes to draw text on the map. Right, And of course, this is not accurate information. And sometimes it's also inciting. So that's vandalism. But there are also other types. For example, there is spam. So sometimes names of roads get replaced by a company name. For example, here, someone put Century West BMW instead of uh, Lancashire Boulevard. And of course, that's not desired behavior. Other types include arbitrary deletions. So this is an excerpt of Munich and all the objects in red, in red have been deleted by a user at a time. And of course, this, uh, this decreases the quality of a map. And there are also more creative forms. So here we have a uh, snapshot from the middle of an ocean. And we can see that someone has created an imaginary town in the middle of the ocean, right? Some, uh, some blocks and also a roundabout. And of course, this may be fun, but it's not correct. So how can people actually contribute to OpenStreetMap? If you want to add something to OpenStreetMap, then you have to uh, to uh, submit a so-called change set. So from a database perspective, change sets are more or less commits and they bundle edits by a single user over a short period of time. And on the right, they have an example change set. And I'm going to walk you through some operations you can do. So um, you can, for example, create new objects. Um, so on the right side, we have an object with a version number one. So that's a new object. You can also modify existing objects uh, indicated by version number four, so greater than one. And you can also delete existing objects. So this is indicated by the crossed out text here. Okay, now in change sets, we can now come up with a definition of vandalism. And we say that a single change set represents vandalism if it either deletes correct information, like the deletion in Munich, or adds wrong information, like the imaginary town or prohibited information like spam or offensive content. And then we define vandalism as a binary classification problem. We say we aim to learn a function that assigns a binary label to a single change set, true or false. So if it's true, then, then it indicates vandalism. And if it's false, then it's a normal change set. And now, of course, the big question is how do we approximate um, this function the best. And for that purpose, we introduce our OVID model, which stands for OpenStreetMap Vandalism Detection Model. And yeah, let's take a look at the architecture. So first of all, not surprising, this is a supervised uh, classification model. Um, and following the problem definition, we take as input an OSM change set. And as output, we will have this binary vandalism label. The individual steps of a model consist of feature extraction, feature refinement and aggregation, and finally, prediction. 
and we're going to take a further look at the individual steps in more detail. So first for the feature extraction, we have uh, three kinds of feature categories here. The first category is change set features and these features aim to capture um, change set metadata. So how many objects are created or deleted with a change set? What is the bound name box? What is the location on the earth? And also um, was there a comment and so on. The next feature category focuses on users. And here we are trying to uh, capture the user uh, experience in the features. So how many objects did that user create in the past? This, does he always use the right annotations? And one, when did he create his account? How many active weeks does he have? How credible is this user? And last, we have the um, edit features. So we have seen that um, chain sets bundle multiple edits, right? And for each edit, we uh, compute an individual feature vector. And there we are trying to capture what, what the ed edit does. So what's the operation? Does it delete? Does it create? What is the object type? Was it uh, an old object or is it a new one? Uh, did he change the name to create visibility maybe? And yeah, so these features we compute for each individual edit and we obtain a feature vector for each edit. The next step is the feature refinement and aggregation. So for the change set and the user features, we simply use fully connected layers to compute more dense representations of these features. And uh, for the edit features, we are faced with a challenge because now we have multiple feature vectors for a single change set, right? And um, so we need to aggregate these uh, feature vectors somehow to obtain a single feature vector because we want to um, in the end classify a single change set if it is vandalism or not. And for that purpose, we're using a multi-head attention mechanism. And the main idea is to weight the edits according to the change set and user features. So we want to select the edits that are most relevant according to the change set and user features. For that, we're using this well-known attention mechanism which consists of a query, keys, and values. And because we want to weight the edits according to the change set and user features, we're using the change set and user features as the query vector here. And for the uh, keys and the values, we are both using the edit features. And then uh, we come up with an aggregated weighted feature vector for the edits. And after that, we take both feature vectors and feed it into a feedforward normal neural network and uh, facilitate uh, the prediction. Okay, so this is how our model looks like and we need to train our model, right? And to train our model, um, we require certain ground truth. The problem when we started this research was that um, there was no large enough ground truth available to actually train a model. And that's why um, we came up with the idea of creating our own ground truth from uh, the OpenStreetMap history. So in particular, we took a look at uh, the rewords and we hope uh, in the OpenStreetMap history, and we filtered those rewords for uh, rewords that um, fix vandalism. So they have to mention vandalism in the comments. And now we need to identify from the rewords the actual vandalism um, chain sets. And there are two scenarios. First one is the revert mentioned in explicit ID. So then it's pretty easy. We just take that ID and already have a change set that committed for vandalism. The other case is a little more complicated. If no explicit ID is um, mentioned, then uh, we take a look at the objects that are being fixed by the revert. And we trace down the objects that only had one contributor. And from these objects, um, we identify the original uh, change set that committed the vandalism. So these are positive examples of vandalism, right? So then we also need the negative examples. And for that, we just random sample from uh, the OSM history. And we assume that the proportion of um, uh, normal edits that do not commit vandalism in the OpenStreetMap history is way bigger than the than the uh, vandalism fraction, right? So by random sampling, we assume to mostly obtain um, negative examples. 
Okay, let's take a look at our evaluation setup. So we conduct experiments on two data sets. The first one is the data sets I just introduced, the data set I just introduced, which is called OSM Rewards. And we split this into train validation and test set. And we make sure that the users in the sets are disjunct to avoid bias to certain users. And then we use a second data set, which is called OSM Manual. And this contains uh, community annotations of vandalism. Um, but it's way smaller than our uh, our own data set, and it's too small to train a model. So we only use this as an additional test set. We compare our approach to baselines. We have uh, first a high random choice baseline, but then we have um, some state of the art vandalism detection baselines for OpenStreetMap. So we, where we have a rule based uh, baseline and also a random forest based baseline. Then we have a vandalism detection baseline from Wikidata. And finally, we have a CNN and word embedding based uh, spam detection model. Let's take a look at the results. Um, we have precision recall, F1 score, and accuracy as metrics. And we observe that first we achieve the best scores in F1 and accuracy on both data sets. And we mainly have an improvement in the recall compared to the baselines. And still, while we are not achieving the best precision, we uh, achieve a comparably high precision here. When we take a look across the data sets, comparing OSM reverts to OSM manual, um, we observe that compared to the baselines, our OVID model transfers the best to the OSM manual data sets. So there we still have 70% accuracy compared to the good performing baselines that drop to below 60% accuracy. To investi investigate the um, contributions of the different feature categories, we performed an ablation study. So we removed um, each uh, feature category from our model and measured the difference. And the bigger the decrease in performance is, the bigger the contribution of the feature category. And here we observe that um, by removing the user features, we see that um, we have the highest uh, degradation in performance. So the user features are most relevant. And we also see that this is mainly in the precision area. So user features really help in improving the precision here. The second uh, most contribution comes in this case from the uh, attention features and the added features, and where we still get uh, 2.8 person points and F1 score improvement. Moving on to the second data set, um, we first observe similar trends. So here we also see that uh, the user features are also most relevant for the uh, OSM manual data set. Um, but leaving out the added features, in this case, uh, gives us a slight increase in performance. So here the uh, added features are not actually helping, but they're also not hurting a lot. And this really hints that um, the generalizability of the added features can be improved, right? And so this is also a subject of future work to improve the performance of the um, added features. And since we're using a multi-head uh, attention mechanism to um, compute the added features, um, you, we thought about um, incorporating background knowledge, maybe from um, large pre-trained language models, which also use uh, the multi-head attention mechanism. So that is uh, here subject to future work. So in conclusion, we have seen that vandalism in OpenStreetMap is a real and a relevant problem. We created a new ground truth data set from existing rewards. We have introduced the OVID model, which mainly consists of user change set and edit features. We have seen improvements over state of the art vandalism detection baselines in OpenStreetMap. We have seen that in, uh, in the ablation study that the user features are most important. And in the, for the future work, uh, I already teasered that we would like to explore the use of the background knowledge to increase the generalizability and to evaluate um, also over with live data in the real OpenStreetMap system. So thank you very much. Um, feel free to reach out to me.
and I'm also happy to take questions. Thank you, Nicholas, for the interesting presentation. Uh, we have uh, one question. Uh, Priyanka, would you like to unmute yourself and ask the question? Otherwise, I can just read out your question. OK, Priyanka. Yes, uh, so uh, would you consider that similar techniques would be uh, useful and scale against uh, these kind of spurious edits on, uh, say, Wikipedia or Wikimedia? Uh, because uh, that is also community driven and they're also uh, not it may not be called vandalism but it is uh, some spurious edits right yes exactly um thank you for your question um yeah uh, that's extremely relevant and in fact there is uh, there are a lot of approaches that actually tackle um the vandalism detection in uh wikidata or fake news or let's say wrong information detection in uh, Wikipedia. Um, there is a difference between the data sources because um, Wikipedia is mostly a textual um, data source and um, Wikidata has the knowledge graph uh, structure where you can compute a lot of different features. And in OpenStreetMap, we have the focus on geographic data. So I think there is a difference in the features and how, and how you make the um, data available to the model. But um, these lines of researches are definitely related. And uh, in fact, we have used the uh, Wikidata uh, vandalism detection model as one of the baselines here. Thank you. Thank you so much. We have another question. And uh, we have like a minute. So uh, Enrico, if you can ask the question. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, thank you. Really nice work. Um, just wanted to uh, ask about, so it seems to be that you assume one single user does the vandalism, right? So, and I just wondered if it's a, a small group of people that are doing the vandalism together, uh, would the model still work or would you need uh, to do some, um, some adjustments? Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting question. I think we really haven't, or we did not really think about like coordinated vandalism by a group of users. Um, so we do not assume anything in, in that direction. Um, still, if we uh, detect like multiple vandalism incidents that may be coordinated or maybe not, um, we could be able to um, detect it by the uh, user patterns. So if we, in, if all these users have only like let's say uh, early. Um, account creation dates, then this could be become suspicious, right? But the question is always like, um, when does it become normal, right? Because if, if it's like a, a lot of vandalism, let's say, and we're, uh, and it becomes the, let's say, normal pattern, then our model could actually be fooled. Um, yeah, but on the other hand, the scale of open street map is quite big, so it, it would uh, take a lot of time. Yeah, and I think it would be interesting to investigate a future work if there are like coordinated uh, vandalism incidents. I, I'm not sure actually if there's this happened already. Yeah, interesting. Okay, yeah, thank you.